Chairman. Um, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Senator Macdonald. Um, I'm not sure whether to put this one to the officers or to the minister. I'm just going to bowl it up and hopefully someone can help. Um, the AMRAP, Australian Music Radio Airplay Project, pretty popular with community broadcasters and pretty popular with local Australian bands. Um, <clears throat> minister, last time we spoke on this, you, uh, you disclosed that it had been punted back into your portfolio from Minister Crane Sands we funding. Reallocated, I think, was the word I'm sure I used. Reallocated. <laughs> uh, and that that had occurred Sands funding. So, mm. it's, so you got the line that item. So it was a challenge. You just didn't get any money. So we're talking about $600,000 to connect local artists with uh, community radio stations. Can we just get an update, uh, please, as to whether that funding has been restored? At, at this point, uh, there is no final decision. It's still something that the department and ourselves are reviewing. Uh, it's obviously a challenging budgetary time at the moment. I imagine. But we're very conscious that it is a, it's a very worthy program. OK. Um, so in principle, the government's committed to maintaining the program? Uh, in, in we have to be able to uh, adequately fund it if we're going to go down that path. So that's something that uh, we're looking at. We believe emergency funds are in place from the Community Broadcasting Foundation that's at the moment. Uh, and we are investigating what our options are. So, Minister, you have kept, you've, you've been able to keep it on life support, I guess, till the end of 2012. Is that financial year 2012 or calendar year? Uh, I'm sure. Calendar. Calendar. Yeah. calendar. Um, I'm, I trust you, you can at least give us an assurance that you believe community radio is essential to media diversity on digital platforms. Don't treat that as a dictator. Okay, but as you well know, and, a, and you've been a long supporter as have I, we do believe it's a very important uh, forum, uh, particularly in uh, the new digital world. So we are working through the challenges at the moment. Uh, and uh, if we're able to, uh, if we're able to make an announcement, we'll make it as early as we can. Okay, but you're not in a position to inform the committee. Tonight. I can't. Uh, I can't cheer you up today, <coughs> Senator Ludlam. It's probably the best way to describe it. That's great. But you should never give up hope. Ah, uh, no, that's that's sage advice, and I won't. And uh, I hope before that little program closes its doors, um, that there's some better news. Can I bring you to the Digital Radio Project, which is larger in scope <clears throat> and, um, if anything, probably more complex. So this is allowing the digital radio, or allowing the community broadcasting sector to transition across to the digital, to, to digital stream. Can you just give us an update, please, uh, in that regard about funding there? I think this, this is a shortfall rather than a cancellation. Yeah. <coughs> information for you, Senator Ludlam. Um, Senator, the government provided $11.2 million over three years, which were 2009-10 to 2011-12, for the establishment and maintenance of community digital radio. Yeah. As you mentioned, there is still funding available. Um, from 12-13, the government will provide $2.2 million ongoing to support digital community radio. <clears throat> is it your understanding that there's a shortfall of roughly $1.4 million a year to keep all the stations that are currently broadcasting on the air? Yeah, uh, Simon Penning, First Assistant Secretary of Broadcasting. Um, the, yes, it's my understanding that the community radio sector has sought an additional funding of approximately that amount, uh, which relates to um, providing additional transmission capacity in the capital cities relating to infill transmitters yeah. uh, to extend the coverage of the service. And that's still under matter which is still under consideration. That's under consideration as well. What happens if that funding isn't found? Well, the, the $2.2 million for the maintain, maintenance of services is ongoing funding, yeah. so that would still be available, but the extension of services that have been requested by the sector would not take place at this time. Um, it's my understanding that it's not actually an extension of services, it's to make sure that everybody is covered. Now, oh, I don't sorry, know. extension of services, by that I mean sort of gap filler type yeah. services. So <clears throat> I'm just trying to get to the consequences of if the extra 1.4 million per annum is not found. Does that mean stations drop on air or just that reception is a bit crap in some parts of town? It will be that some areas of a particular location, because they're not serviced by a gap filler, may not receive the digital radio service. So the reach would be Reduced. Less. But we're not talking about stations dropping offline? 
uh, just the reception. Not as far as I'm aware, <coughs> Senator. Yeah. Um, uh, as my understanding base is that essentially uh, it will impact on their capacity to provide those additional additional services. Um, you know exactly how the community sector chooses to respond to that. Uh, you know whether they're not getting that funding that they've sought it will will be a matter for them. Okay. Um, so that's not your call to make then. <clears throat> if yeah. the funding's not forthcoming, either um, transmission quality across the board may be degraded for the amount of um, transmission reach. Yeah. 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 Or stations could go. Stations could fall off off the edge of a cliff, but quality would be improved for those that remain. And I think it does also depend on, as Dr Pelling said, about the choice for the community radio sector because some of them are sort of introducing services which might actually be short-term services. They might go on air for a while and then come off. So that, that's a feature that we find with digital radio services in the commercial area as well, that some might be just a time-sensitive um, service that lasts for, say, for example, um, the tour of a, you know, um, international performer yeah. or a festival or something like that. Um, look, <clears throat> excuse me. Look, it's my understanding, and I presume you've been, I'm presuming that you've been briefed on this by the, by the sector. Is that we're not just talking about patchy transmission quality. We're not just talking about temporary events that might not, some might not one day find they've got, <clears throat> the spectrum that they need. That we're actually looking at potentially stations just falling off the air. Senator, I think um, we're happy to take that on notice, but, but in a general sense, the, the base funding is still there and any uh, increase in funding is subject to consideration by the government as, as with AMRAP. Okay, thanks. Um, if there's, I mean, you've, taken, you've offered to take some info on notice, particularly interested in the fact that um, my information is that we may lose some stations if the so funding we'll take on secure. notice whether we, we have any information about programs going off air. Yeah, good. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Senator